Hi guys, this is JP from FSI Panel. Welcome to this video where we will fly the uh, Gatwick to Jersey airline flight, the latest training scenario, EasyJet 873, departing in the morning. And uh, I decided today to fly it on the PMDG 737. The reason is uh, I got a good discussion on my Discord channel with some guy saying you cannot fly the arrival with the PMDG 737, not say I don't say the PMDG, but the 737 VNAV is not able to do a correct arrival. You are too high, too fast, and you cannot fly the ANAV approach in uh, Jersey. And Airbus guys jumping, saying that yeah, Airbus is always better anyway. Okay, good. So today, what I want to do is to show you that this PMDG 737 VNAV is perfect, but you need to know what you are doing. So you need to program it perfectly well, and you need to. Uh, to know what you are doing. So today we will try to do that. We will use real world procedures from uh, departure to arrival. Initially, I wanted to make I wanted to make a real uh, live stream. Unfortunately, I got sick and I had to cancel the live stream. So it will be like a real event. As you can see, I have put the uh, destination information on top of the screen and that will be like in a real uh, live stream. Unfortunately, I'm still a little bit sick. So if I'm coughing from time to time, I'm very sorry about that so i just loaded the aircraft in gatwick i have already started fsi panel fsi panel has set the whole cockpit for us we are ready basically to request a clearance and to start flying to jersey before we do that we do that sorry let's have a look at the position we are right now at the north terminal this is a terminal that is used sometime by easyjet uh, early departure and we are expecting probably to push back facing south on Quebec Alpha and then we need to taxi to runway 08 right this morning. So several way we're expecting probably to join Lima and then one of the three taxiway going to the south here to join taxiway Juliet and Juliet we can go all the way down to our takeoff runway. We can even use runway 08 left maybe as a taxiway. We will see that with the um, ATC when we request our clearance. As per the flight plan, then we are expecting the Imvo 1 Zulu departure out of Gatwick, runway 08 right. So all these airports in London, you have low altitude for a long period of time. You can see the restriction for the first waypoint we're going to fly. Quebec, uh, sorry, Kilo Kilo Echo 05, maximum speed 220 knots. And we have to be between 2,500 and 3,000 feet. So it's very important in London to maintain these altitudes as you have traffic around you all around the place. Several airports, even London City, we used to stay at 2,000 feet for a long period of time. So do not, uh, do not believe FSI panel has forgot you, forgot you when you don't get any higher clearance during the departure. This is completely normal. As you can see, all the way to Imvor, we will be only at 4,000 feet. So that's the way it is in London. Until you clear that London area, then you will get higher. All right, so for the SID, transition altitude 6,000 feet. Important to note here the uh, departure frequency, which is 134125. Then it's an AirNav 1 departure, as you can see with the first point. So AirNav 1 means we have to be very precise. So as per the book, we should engage autopilot as soon as possible. So on the 737, this is 400 feet. Then we have more information about GNNSS and DME requirements and to comply with the speed and the altitude, of course. All right, so we are ready. We will jump in the cockpit, listen to the ATIS once to see that if everything is done properly, and then we will go ahead and request our clearance. Let's go in the cockpit and do that. Here we are. So in FSI panel, always ATIS is available on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, COM2. So I just click it and we can hear it. This is Gatwick Information Hotel, runway in use 08 right ILS approach, surface wind 060, 21 knots, visibility 3000 meters, rain, cloud broker 1200 feet, temperature 22, dew point 12, QNH 1018, transition level flight level 70, acknowledge received information hotel. All right, so we have hotel, 1018, 1018, 22 degrees. If I go to my N1 limit, FSI panel has set already our takeoff performance with 22 degrees, that's correct. 
and everything is good. So we have information hotel, we are ready to go. So let's call ATC and request our clearance. We are stand 562 with hotel. So frequency is 121955. Let's see if we can get any clearance today to Jersey. Uh, delivery, very good morning, easy 68 x ray Bravo, stand 562, ready to pick up clearance to Jersey, information hotel, and we are Boeing 738. Easy 68 x ray Bravo, good morning, clear to Jersey as filed, Inver 1 Zulu departure, climb 3,000 feet, and squawk 3541. Roger, clear to uh, Jersey as filed, runway 08 right, Inver 1 Zulu departure, climb 3,000 feet, and the score is 3541. Easy 6-8 X-Ray Bravo. Easy 6-8 X-Ray Bravo. Read back correct. When ready for pushback, contact ground 121.805. Roger, when uh, ready for pushback, ground 121.805. Easy 6-8 X-Ray Bravo. Bye bye. All right, 21805. So we have been cleared on the Invo 3 Zulu departure. So let's have a quick look there. If you go to your route page, Invo 1 Zulu, that's what we wanted. Perfect. 3,000 feet initially. Checked. And the transponder, 3541. All right. So we are ready. Let's have a look outside. I think we still have the bridge connected. So I'm going to ask GS6 to get ready for departure. And we will start. Prepare for pushback and departure. Good. So let's do the before start. So 737, pre flight checklist first, please. So pre-flight checklist, oxygen was tested 100%. Navigation and transfer switch are normal and auto. Windows Eat are on. Pressurization mode selector. So that's very important to check here. Auto. Flight instrument. So we have heading 077. QNH 1018, reading 200 feet, 200 feet on the first officer's side, 1018 on the uh, instrument everywhere. Here we can change it as well, 1018. Parking brake is set and engine start lever cut off. Pre-flight checklist completed. Let's do the before start flow. Before start flow, we don't have any fuel in the center pump, so we just switch the main pumps on. Then we go to the seat belt, make sure your seat belt is on. Ground give us the clearance to pressurize, so I can pressurize the hydraulic. Finally, we just put the anti-collision light on. And to let ATC know that we are about to push, once we get the pushback clearance, we will switch our transponder on. Let's read the uh, before start. Flight deck door is closed and locked. Fuel, we have 5.3 tons with four pumps on. Passenger signs on. Windows locked, locked. MCP, so V2 is 136, heading 077, 3000 feet, LNAV and VNAV. Flight director is on my size and we have auto total armed. Takeoff speed. V1, 121, 123, sorry, V rotate 131 and V2, 136. Those speeds are computed for a wet runway. CDU pre flight completed. Rudder under and trim, 3 and 0. Taxi and takeoff briefing completed, and the anti collision light is on before start. Checklist completed. Let's request or push back. Ground, very good morning, easy 68 X ray Bravo, stand uh, 562, ready for push and start. Good morning, easy 68 X ray Bravo, push and start approved, facing south on Quebec Alpha. Report ready for taxi. Roger, push and start approved, facing south on Quebec Alpha, we report for taxi, easy 68 X ray Bravo. Right, we are ready for push, so now we will put the transponder to altitude reporting off. And ATC will see us on the ground and we are ready for push. So let's bring our GS6 friend and we are ready for pushback. And we need the nose to the right, the tail to the left. Here we go. And release parking brake.
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I should reset the traffic for those scenarios, huh? I used uh, FSTTL here, and there is a way to set it only for static. I don't know, guys, if you can put a comment how you will do it. As you can see, I have the, uh, the traffics all around the place, but they are not uh, static. And uh, I read somewhere that you can just have the uh, static uh, traffic, so therefore we could have some nice view while flying, but we don't have any traffic like just now the EasyJet behind us. If anybody can tell me in the section down below, I will be very happy. All right, so we are clear to start the engines. So let's go ahead, we turn the packs off. Then we make sure that we have the second engine page on and we are going to start engine number two. So we go with the engine number start to ground. When you do that, you will see the start valve open on number two and then we should check our engine start. So we have N2 accelerating then we check that N1 accelerate. All pressure is increasing. When this oil pressure later on will be at 13 or more, the low oil pressure light will come off. So now we are 25% N2 fuel on. So now I check the fuel flow. Once you have a fuel flow, you will have probably a light up. And now when you see 13 PSI, all oil pressure is gone. So check now N1 increasing, N2 increasing, ITT, EGT is increasing, and by 56% N2, the switch here should go back to off position. Sometimes it's sticky, so this is why we check it. 56% off, and a few seconds later, the starter valve cut off this is the code from the first officer and it start cut off engine number two has started normally we'll do the same for engine number one and i will tell gs6 that we are ready because it takes a bit of time so let's take gs6 that we have I'm good engine ground. start of yeah, course in real life i will never do that because if you have a hot start hung start or if you have a tailpipe fire for example you will not see it if we would have right now a tailpipe fire, the only people that will tell you is ATC or your ground staff. So we never disconnect, of course, uh, before we have two engines started. But here we are in the simulator. To save a bit of time and to save your time, this is this is why I have told, I have told, sorry, uh, GS6 that we are ready to disconnect. All right, same procedure for the uh, number one. Normally, when you fly out of home base, you use ignition B. This is because ignition B is on the uh, a standby AC, which means it will work even if you only have battery as a source of power. And this is to make sure it works. All right, so left clear, right clear, perfect. She can leave and we have two good start. When you have two good start, the first officer will go with the after start flow. The after start flow, you need to start with the electrical. So we want to put generator one on the bus, generator two on the bus. Then if you go up right there, you see that we have the probit that needs to be turned on. Finally, we will set the air. So left pack to automatic, right pack to automatic. The isolation valve goes to automatic. We don't need the APU anymore. So we turn off the APU bleed air. The APU is not required anymore, so APU can go off. We make sure that we switch the engine start to continuous and we hit the recall. If here you see no light, it means you probably have done everything you have to do on the overhead panel. We check here all parameters and we can close the window. Once everything is there, the captain will ask you for the flaps. So in that case, we're going for flaps 5, or let's go flaps 5. And we can go flight control check. Full mm. left, full right, full down, full up, rudder, full left, and full right. We have flight control checked. And now we have to do the before taxi checklist, please. So before taxi checklist, the generators, they are on, probit on, anti-ice not required. Isolation valve right there is auto. 
Engine start switches continuous. Recall has been checked. Auto brake. RTO. Engine start lever. Idle detent. Flight control. Checked and ground equipment. Clear left and clear right. All good, we are ready for taxi. Easy 68 X ray Bravo, ready for taxi. Roger, Easy 68 X ray Bravo. Taxi Quebec Alpha, Lima, Romeo, hold short of Juliet Taxiway. Uh, Roger, Taxi uh, Quebec Alpha, Lima, Romeo, hold short of uh, Juliet Taxiway. Easy 68 X ray Bravo. <coughs> All right. We've got our clearance. What I used to do always, what I do is I write my clearance right down there during the taxi. The double slash mean all short. So here, if I'm not sure about my clearance, I can read it again. Quebec Alpha, Lima, Romeo, all short, Juliet. That will stay on the scratch pad until I get a new clearance. So if we have a quick look at our chart. Here we go. So we are right now at the position 562, we push back. So we want to taxi via Quebec Alpha, then Lima to the right, then Romeo. Ah, Romeo is uh, crossing the bridge here, crossing here, and then uh, Juliet. So we have to go like this. Perfect, and then all short of Juliet. All right, we are ready to go. Let's go ahead and taxi this airplane. Taxi light on, please. And here we go. So now I'm getting ready, guys, for live stream. So I plan to do live stream, exactly that flight. I wanted to do a live stream. And then during the live stream, you can ask any question you want. I hope I will be able for the, li the first live stream to manage everything. I, I did a bit of training to to look at the chat and to be ready to, to answer your questions. So I'm looking forward for that. And I will try to do short live stream, just one sector, for example, here, we fly to Jersey, maybe the, the next, or the, the, the next live stream might be a Jersey to Gatwick on the way back on the Airbus or on the 737 and maximum one hour and a half so that we can enjoy uh, the live stream. All right, now the first uh, taxiway that we're expecting here is Quebec. Bravo, so we are not clear via Quebec Bravo, we are clear via Lima. So we just continue to the second to the right, which will be Lima. We can see the sign right here. And after Lima, we have to take initially Quebec to join Romeo. So we have to be very careful here. Take a right here on Lima, we have the sign on the taxiway. And we can see that the EasyJet in front of us is in fact doing the exact same clearance, looks like. We are lucky, we can just follow it. So Romeo, we have already the sign right there, that's perfect. So the EasyJet in front of us was doing the same thing. So let's follow him, Romeo. We are crossing as expected right now. And then we're going to have old Juliet to old short. So perfect, we manage. Now we are on the taxiway Romeo and Juliet is the next one and our instruction is to hold short. So we are going to hold short right there before next intersection. Come on ETC, tell us something. Maybe we don't have to stop. Easy, 6-8 X-ray Bravo. Continue taxi holding point zero eight right via Juliet. 
Roger, continue the right right via Juliet, uh, easy 68 X ray Bravo. All right, so we are clear to continue the right right via Juliet. We can see the sign here on the left. Uh, you will see it now. This is Juliet Taxiway, the first ride. So we are going to take a right there. Red light, nothing we can do in the simulator here, I guess. Unless I'm wrong, let me know. But normally, of course, if you have this kind of red light, we will stop. This is a way to protect yourself as well from intersection takeoff. Imagine here in Gatwick, you get an intersection takeoff and you are clear for lineup, but you see the red bar. So maybe that means you are not in the intersection that you're supposed to be. So that can save your life. You are already clear for lineup and suddenly you see that your red bars are still on. So the worst thing to do is just to cross the red bar. Consider it as a, as a red light in, uh, in your car. So just stop there and verify. Maybe you're not at the right intersection and the runway for departure is too short because ATC will turn off the red bar where you're supposed to be. So if they tell you clear to line up the right right via Alpha 3 and, uh, and you don't have the green light, you have red bar, maybe you're not in Alpha 3, maybe you're in Alpha 4 and then you don't have enough runway. So that's a good thing to to have on the airport and to make sure to not cross those red lines un unless ATC tells you not working or cross the red bars. All right, on the way for 08 right, so let's do a quick takeoff briefing. So we are departing on the wet runway, runway 08 right in Gatwick. It's a left hand seat takeoff, animal functions below 80 knots. We will just stop between 80 and V1, just call the malfunction, I will decide. If my call is stop, I will immediately and simultaneously disconnect the autothrottle, apply maximum reversers, extend the speed brake, and we monitor the auto brake, which is on RTO. And if required, we use manual braking, bearing in mind the wind direction. Today, the wind is slightly from the left. So in case of fire, I will try to park the aircraft slightly to the left. Once the aircraft come to a complete stop, I will set the parking brake and then I will inform ATC. Please monitor my actions, call any omission and uh, your actions for you. Please call a speed brake up, reverse as normal, call 60 knots, mm -hmm. select the flaps to 40. And once the aircraft come to a complete stop, please advise ATC that we need help. If my call is continue, no actions below 400 feet, except positive rate gear up, cancel any warning, any light, so we have a clear cockpit. By 400 feet, we select the whole mode. I suggest we go heading in that case and we inform ATC. Identify the failure, memory items if applicable. Start the APU, please, and inform ATC that we are flying straight ahead, climbing to uh, 3,000 feet. Gatwick weather is good, so we can fly back to uh, Gatwick, uh, runway 08 right if required, or we have ETRO as well as a possible uh, destination alternate if required um, to divert. Any question for the briefing? So takeoff briefing can be very long or can be very short. The first one, when you fly with, uh, with your crew for the first time in the morning, it's to do a nice and long briefing. And then you will say basically on the second briefing, the same actions and you just brief what you will do in the air. We'll go runway heading 3000 feet, or if you have a special procedure, you will brief it at that time. All right, we are approaching in sequence, a lot of people to depart. I think I will turn off the uh, FSDTL if I can do that. So we are not losing time as soon as I'm transferred to the uh, tower. So let's see. This is holding point Juliet Bravo. Everybody is taking that intersection. I want to go full length. So let's see if we can turn off that traffic. Remove nearby. Oh yeah, that worked. That not, that's not bad, okay. Good, so let's continue, we go full length. So we have this call 80 knots in a takeoff briefing. This is what on the Boeing, on the Airbus, they use 100 knots. On the Boeing, we use 80 knots. This is what qualify the high speed versus low speed reject. Above 80 knots, you will have throttle Jesus hold. X-ray Bravo, contact tower now, 124.23. Safe flight.
One, two, four, two, three, Z, six, eight, X, three, Bye bye. Okay, I just have to be careful here, guys. One, two, four, two, three. There we go. And the, the departure frequency we said before was one, three, four, one, two, five. So that's as well something I will select just now. One, three, four, one, two, five. A one, three, four. One, two, five. Here we go. So I wanted to tell you about this 80 knots. So on the 737, we do 80 knots checked. This is to check that my speed is the same as my first officer's speed. That's one reason. The second reason is, is my first officer still alive? Is he incapacitated? If I don't get uh, checked at 80 knots, maybe he's not following the takeoff. Maybe he's not with me in the cockpit uh, mentally. So that's another reason. And the, the third reason is, of course, um, for the high speed reject. After 80 knots, if we have a master caution, basically we will probably not stop. There is no reason to stop. It, you go airborne and then you look at the, uh, the problem. So after 80 knots, passing 84 knots, we're going to have throttle hold. So now the uh, servo of the auto throttle is not energized anymore. So it means if I reject, I can just reject the takeoff. If I reject the takeoff before 84 knots, and I close the thrust levers, then my auto throttle guy will put me back the thrust to takeoff position. So this is why we send a takeoff briefing. I will immediately and simultaneously disconnect the auto throttle and close the thrust levers. Because if you're below 84 knots, then auto throttle will give you back the thrust and you will maybe overrun. So that's one thing. And above 84 knots, then uh, we are in a go-minded situation unless we get fire, smoke, warning, ATC call, or if you believe that the aircraft is unable to fly. That will be a good reason. That will be the good reasons to abort. All right, we are ready. Let's call the tower. Tower, hello. This is Easy 68 X-Ray Bravo. We're holding short uh, 08 right. Juliet 1, ready? Easy 68 X ray Bravo, good morning, runway 08 right, line up and wait. Line up and wait 08 right, uh, Easy 68 X ray Bravo. All right, clear to line up. What we check always is check your runway. Is it 08 right? Yes, we are clear for line up. Left side is clear. My first officer will look to the right, telling me there is not a 777 on short final. That's fine. And now we can do the action. So the pilot flying will decide whether he wants weather or terrain. In my case here, I will take terrain as weather is not working. So my first officer will take the weather in that case. And now we can go for the uh, lineup actions. So landing light will go with takeoff clearance. We will set the strobes. Then we will set the transponder. Then we will tell the cabin, cabin crew take off in one minute. So now everything is done. We are lining up the runway. We are just we just have to remember that we didn't switch our takeoff land or landing light that will go with the uh, takeoff clearance one thing as well that is nice to check when you're lining up your runway check that you have auto throttle arm easy six eight extra bravo wind zero six zero one eight knots runway zero eight right cleared for takeoff clear takeoff zero eight right easy six eight extra bravo we are clear for takeoff yes i wanted to tell you check your auto throttle it's arm, check LNAV and VNAV if applicable, if you decided to arm them and check your runway heading. Check that what you see on your map display right there matches and you are on the right runway, not on 08 left. All right, we are clear for takeoff. Let's go, lights on. Let's switch the uh, timer here and we go for takeoff. So 40% and one. Stable, N1 Toga, set takeoff thrust. Takeoff thrust set. Now look at 84 knots, what's going to happen to the N1 indication. Now we're in throttle hold. Rotate. Rotate. Yes, 
Europe. Elnav is captured. Four hundred feet is pass. Vinav speed. Command. Arm Elnav Vinav speed. Six eight extra Bravo, maintain three thousand feet. Contact London Control now. One three four decimal one two five. Bye bye. Maintain three thousand feet and London Control one three four one two five. Easy six eight extra Bravo. Bye bye. All right, as we are reaching three thousand, I went vertical speed. This is to avoid any possible TCAS to other traffic around. Now we are in vertical speed, approaching three thousand feet. I went flaps one. Now I can go flaps up. The speed restriction 220 knots is active. So if I go back to VNAV, my, my uh, FMC will maintain 220 knots. Let's contact departure. Uh, departure hello, this is Easy 68 X3 Bravo, 3000 feet, Team Vo 1 Zulu. Easy 68 X3 Bravo, identified, climb 4000 feet. Oh, this is a Scottish voice, I guess. Roger, climb 4,000 feet, is 68 X-ray Bravo. So 4,000 feet, do not use here level change. If I press speed intervene, it will go with high, high thrust. And we have traffic around the place, as I told you before in the briefing. So just go vertical speed, easy, 1,000 feet a minute. That's good enough, as long as you are in the departure area. area. Good, so flaps up, no lights after takeoff, please. So after takeoff, this three light can go off, 1,002 level off as expected. We are not in icing condition, we are not in severe turbulence, so the engine start switch just goes off. The uh, auto brake goes to off and the landing gear goes to off. After takeoff checklist, please, engine bleeds. On, this is important as well because sometimes we do no bleed takeoff. Packs are auto. Landing gear, up and off, flaps, up, no lights. After takeoff checklist completed. Beautiful weather. Something that Airbus did very well over the Boeing fleets, the heading bug. Why do we have to always synchronize the heading bug in f when we are flying in El Nav? Well, it's a philosophy. And it's, it's a shame, in fact. I would really enjoy if we could just even have a sync mode where you just click and it sync the heading. But unfortunately, that's not the case. All right, what did I do with my first officer there? Up, uh, yeah, back to the, the map mode. Okay, so we have restrictions, 220 knots for the speed and 4,000 feet by Imvor. So now you know already that you most probably you will not get higher until you pass Imvor, so don't need to worry. Sometimes you might hear ATC telling you clear unrestricted flight level 70. So if you hear that, then it means you can disregard the next restriction. So now we are waiting for the next uh, clearance and that will take a bit of time, I guess. All right, let's have a look from the window, oh, it's a typical, is it a typical London weather, guys? I don't want to be saying bad things about London. My wife is British and I always joke telling her it's a pouring weather like in London. So sometimes I heard and uh, I see my family over there in London, they have beautiful weather for a week and we have very bad weather in, uh, in Southern, Central Europe as well. So. It depends, but I'm sure statically there is much more rain in uh, in London than probably in, in south of France or in Switzerland. All right, here, if you will have the, the radar radar, which I hope we have soon, this kind of weather might give some turbulence. Now, if you're in the departure area like this and it's not showing in red, we will, we will probably go through because ATC will be overstressed if everybody starts asking diversion for those, cli those, those small clouds here. If it's higher clouds like Cumulonimbus, then of course we have to. 
And that becomes a real nightmare for the ATC, in a congested area like in London, for example. All right, so Imvur, then we will continue our routing. And this flight will take will take us another half an hour until we are in the approach. So let's hope that we can get a nice climb clearance very soon so we can get above those clouds for the passengers as well. And the cabin crew, they are still seated. Normally we release the seat bell by 10,000 feet. If it's a very short flight, then you could release the cabin crew by calling them, not the seat belt, but you call them and you tell them it's a short flight. As discussed in the briefing, you can start your service, be careful. So that's a possibility here. We will just do a standout, so we will wait for 10,000 feet to uh, release the cabin crew. So during live stream, I think we will have time to discuss a couple of things, systems or anything you want. So I am uh, looking forward for that, even though it will be my very first live stream. I don't have a lot of experience at all, so it will be interesting. But everybody started with the first stream, isn't it? So we'll see. I will put that on my Discord and my YouTube channel. So if you are not a subscriber yet, please do subscribe to the sh to Discord and to uh, the YouTube channel. That will help me doing more video and you will not miss the announcement of the live stream. All right, we passed Imvur. Do we have another restriction? If I look there, nothing anymore. So the speed now will increase. Look what's gonna happen then. We could increase our speed as there is no more speed restrictions. So if I go Vinav now, Bravo, clean clean level speed. Eight zero. Climb flight level 80, easy, uh, 68, X-ray, bravo. All right, 80, so that's 4,000 feet more. So here I will just go 8,000 feet. As you can see, I, as I'm in VNAV, so the best thing to do is just push Alt Intervene. You expect N1, VNAV speed, and the aircraft will start climbing. That's good, good rate of climb here, and again, once we're approaching 8.0, we will use vertical speed to reduce the rate of climb. 5,000 feet transition set standard. It's 6,000 feet, in fact, in London, so I'm, I was a bit too early there, but doesn't doesn't make any problem because we have been clear for a flight level. So we are in standard, we can do the altimeter check. I'm passing 5.7, top, compared, and the junior was good as well. We are good. See the rate of climb. If you would have a traffic like this guy in front of us, he will have a TCAS. So now what we do, Easy we reduce. Easy Bravo. Contact London Control, 126.075. London Control on 126.075. Uh, Easy 68, Bravo. Bye-bye. 26.075. Um, 1,000 to level off. 26.075. That's it. London Control, good uh, morning. This is Easy 68 X ray Bravo approaching level 80 to Vuga. Easy 68 X ray Bravo, radar contact, continued climb, flight level 160. Continue climb 160, Easy 68 X ray Bravo. 160 and VNAV N1 VNAV speed. Here we go. So now we are climbing to 160. That's fine. Passing 10,000 feet, the aircraft will, will accelerate to the climb speed. The climb speed, you can see it in VNAV. As we said, we will talk about VNAV. So if you go to climb, which is the actual phases of the flight, we can see that the climb speed will be 301 knots above 10,000 feet until we cross Mach 0.692 where the system will revert to Mach. So let's see that happening now. 250 by 10,000, you can see now, approaching 10,000 feet. Bing, we see 301. That's what we're expecting. Mach is right down there. Once the Mach is equal to 692, then we will revert here in Mach. 
So the window will basically open in Mac mode here. So you can change these by changing the figure right there. Those are computed right now by the cost index. So if when we do our pre-flight, we get a cost index today of 45. If you increase, if you put it to zero, this is equal to long range cruise. And if you put 999, this is the maximum. This is the fastest, but as well, very uh, bad for the fuel. So that will, in, that will in, in fact change your cruise speed, climb speed and descent speed. So this is the climb speed, 301. We pass 10,000 feet, so lights off. Seat belt can go to auto. And what we check at that stage is as well pressurization that we are normal and still climbing, all good, everything. And we check that we have 1215 active on COM2 as we want to make sure we don't miss any emergency call or if for some reason we uh, change the frequency or we are not anymore in the right frequency, they can call us on 1215. So that's the kind of things you will do at 10,000 feet. Perfect. So we, we were talking about climb. If you go to cruise, you can see that cruise is expected at 692. And if I go to descend, we have as well as well, as well 1692, so 691, let's say, and the speed will be 290 knots. So easy 68 X ray Bravo, climb flight level 220, final. 220, here we go. Climb 220, final, easy 68 X ray Bravo. 220 set, perfect. So, yeah, all the speeds are the same. We can change that, but. That's good for us today. We are not going to change anything. So we will monitor one thing because I talk about it. This 692. So you can see that right now we are 61. When we see 692, you will see here that we are changing into Mac mode and the window, it is black because we are in VNAV. But if we will be flying in, um, in open window, like if I go level change, for example, then we can change the... Uh, Mac to speed right there. So right now we will let the FMC do the job and we will see what happened at 692. And then as we have a very short flight, we should get ready for arrival in uh, Jersey and we will program our VNAV, we will program our approach to make sure that we are ready uh, for this landing over there. 1000 here, 692, we are still good. All right, I will start to preset the Jersey VOR here, 112.2. So we have already some indication about a DME distance here. And Guernsey, that's a good idea, uh, 109.4. So now we have some indication about Jersey and Guernsey. Maybe we will get the DME very soon so we know the distance. All right, we are approaching 220, no traffic around us. I don't see anybody in the TCAS. So that's as well, once you are at this altitude, you don't need, it's not a requirement anymore to uh, reduce the rate of climb, even though it's a good habit to do it if you have a high rate of climb. So right now, for example, 2,000 feet a minute, I will go out of vertical speed and I will go in vertical speed and reduce the rate of climb. So vertical speed, 1,000 feet per minute, 1,000 to level off is checked, and therefore we make sure we are approaching our level with a nice rate of climb. All right, approaching 220, then we will start to prepare. We will start preparing for the approach. 692. If I go VNAV now, we will revert into Mac mode. It should at 693. It didn't do. It should. On the rear aircraft, it changed. Here, yeah, it didn't change. Okay. Not a big deal. In the aircraft, it will change. And now it changed. Okay, perfect. FMC speed, VNAV path, level 220. And now, usually, what we will do, the first thing here is a cruise briefing. Cruise briefing is basically what's, what will be my action if I lose an engine now. 
So you will say what you will do. Basically, we will disconnect auto throttle, set max continuous thrust, select a lower altitude, push level change, packet the airways if you're on, on, the, uh, on the oceanic, for example, so that you don't cross any traffic going in front of you. If you are on the ATC like now, we will maintain the airways. <coughs> Sorry about that. And uh, this is the kind of things we will brief now. And you can divert back to London. We can divert, you find the airport around. So you basically brief your colleague where you intend to go should we have an engine failure. Now we can see that top of descent is in front of us. We have around 10 minutes before we need to start our descent. So let's prepare the approach. Let's bring the charts and prepare the approach. So we are arriving via the star is Lelni one kilo. So let's have a look at this. Navigraph charts. So we are arriving from Lelna. We should be at flight level 200 by there. And then we expect to fly via Alderney, Alpha Lima Delta. And then either we get direct to the field or to the initial approach fix. We are not sure yet. So if I look into my routing right now, um, in the FMC, we're expecting to fly exactly what is right there. So basically Lelna to Aldi, to Shark, and then to the uh, uh, VOR, to the NDB above the airfield. So if we check that now into our FMC, as you can see, this is exactly what we have. We have the restriction here, 220. Lelna, sorry, Lelna is a 220. We don't have yet the restrictions. And the restriction on the star said, if you're coming from the airways, upper November 692, which is not our case, so we don't need to worry about that. We'll see what ATC tells us. After that, we will go for the approach. So let's bring the approach out. This is the approach. So if we look at this approach, we can see that uh, we have uh, probably from, from the north, we will use Lapli or direct to Gipta. Lapli at 2,000 feet, Gipta at 2,000 feet. Then we will start our descent at Zulu, Julia Juliet 08 Foxtrot. It's a three degrees descent. Down to the minimum, we are flying to the LNAV and VNAV, as the 737 is not flying LPV. So LNAV, VNAV, the minimum is 571. So we can set right away now the minimum, 571. So it's a barrow minimum, 571. Five seventy-one. Set. In case of missed approach, climb to three thousand feet straight ahead to Juliet Juliet Mike zero one. Then turn right to zero zero two, and Gamdu to join the holding or as directed. Perfect. So three thousand feet straight ahead to the first waypoint. Let's see that. E six eight X-ray Bravo, fly Lalna. Guernsey VOR, Lapley, expect RMP, zero weight approach. Roger, Lelna, Guernsey VOR, Lapley, and we expect RMP, runway zero eight, easy six eight, X-ray Bravo. So Lelna, then we need to fly Guernsey, and then Lapley. Right. So now we have the routing, if we look into our routing. Now it's very nice because we can see that we have already a nice route that brings us all the way to our approach. So thank you ATC to help us like that. Now we know exactly what we are doing. So now if we look into our system, everything is done perfectly well and we can see the top of descent in seven miles. And now the uh, VNAV is perfectly ready and able to do it. We will see that. So we will check the go around. The auto brake will use auto brake two with manual braking for reverses. We use flaps 30 for flaps 40 for landing. It's a short runway. So let's use flaps 40 for landing. And that's about it. So then I will brief you during descent about what we have to do in the FMC in case we fly air nav approach. So now we should start descent. Reset MCP altitude, but ATC doesn't let us descent. So let's hope we get decent clearance very soon. Otherwise, we'll have to mitigate to go back into our descent planning.
no descent for now top of descent is right there vinav pat will become vinav alt when we pass top of descent you have top of descent right now showing 0 0.7 miles once we pass that top of descent then we have vinav alt you can see now on the nps vertical deviation that our flight pass actual as per the vinav is too high you have the figure here up to 400 so we are 250 feet too high right now and once this 400 is gone then we will not see anymore we are full scale deviation and if we want to know exactly what we are doing we go to descent and right there you see the vertical deviations we are right now 700 feet higher than what the vnav wanted to do and in order to mitigate what the aircraft is doing right now she's reducing the speed so i do not agree with that so i will go speed intervene and i will tell her maintain the speed at 27 or 280 knots even so now i am taking care of my speed and we will we will descend whenever etc tells us to descend that's something that can happen we have traffic so they will not let us descend so no worry no problem we will wait until we have an etc clearance and then we will go ahead and start our descent easy 68 x-ray bravo descend flight level 200 direct guernsey golf uniform romeo Roger, descent level 200 direct to Guernsey, uh, easy 680 X-ray Bravo. So only 2,000 feet to lose, so let's go vertical speed and direct to Guernsey. Guernsey on top, execute. El Nav, we are going to Guernsey, descending 200. So once we fly this kind of approach, what we have to do in the progress page, nav status, index, and in the nav status, we can see that this is the VOR that I inserted manually. If you go to next page two, right now the FMS is getting information from DME, from the VOR, from the GPS, and from the localizer, if you selected the localizer. So what I will tell now my, my uh, FMC is do not use DME, do not use VOR, use only GPS. Because if we have a faulty VOR, 1002 level off is checked, then we might have navigation precision drop and we might lose the approach so to make sure we always have a good approach we turn off dme update and vor update that's something you want to do good so let's hope atc transfer us now and we will see what's next now track miles if we look in the track miles right now we are 60 track miles so you multiply by three that's about 180 so we are right now about 2000 feet too high not a big deal we will get descent very soon and then we can mitigate we can go level change there is plenty of way on this aircraft to go down so we'll we will work on that and at the end once we are in the flight in the flight path we will use vnav so right now what you can do if you want to update your vnav is set a new cruise altitude at 200 so you go to cruise page you set your new cruise altitude, fly level 200. My speed right now is 280 knots. Execute. And now you told your VNAV you are at this altitude that will help recompute Easy the descent. Easy 68 X-ray Bravo, descend flight level 120. Contact Jersey approach now on 120.305. Bye-bye. Okay. Descend level 120 and the approach on 120.305. Easy 68 X ray Bravo. Bye bye. 20305. And now we are clear to descend. We are a bit high. So, what I done, level change, and I can increase the speed to go down. No need for anything now. No speed brake, nothing. We will catch up. Let's see what happened. Hold the arrival and see what they give us. Just approach, hello, this is uh, easy 68 X-ray Bravo, we are descending uh, 120, passing 188 to Guernsey VOR. Easy 68 X-ray Bravo, descend flight level 120, continue direct to the Guernsey VOR, number one for the RMP 08. Roger, descend 120 to uh, Guernsey VOR, number one for the RMP 08, easy 68 X-ray Bravo. 
All right, so we are number one. So here we can use a bit of speed brake. We try to uh, go back to our descent path as we are number one. So if we look in the track miles right now, we have 50 track miles multiplied by three, 150. We are at 167, so we are not too bad. If we, go if we look in the legs page, Lapli 2000 or above, Gipta 2000 or above, and 2000 feet at Julia Juliet 08 Foxtrot. No problem. So everything looks good. That first point that you have right there is when the FMC wants to reduce the speed toward 240 knots that's what you see right there in the descent page 240 knots below flight level 100 so at that stage the fmc will start to reduce the speed but we will not do it because we are flying level change so what's going to happen for sure is we are going to get back slowly to our profile because the fmc right now will kind of level off to reduce the speed toward 240 knots. We are not doing it, so we are getting better on our descent profile. Vertical speed, and we have alt acquired, and I will reduce the speed now. 280 knots, that's good enough because we need to, uh, let's put 250 knots because we need to descend. Guernsey, the island is in front of us. And we are going to Jersey, which is a little bit farther down. Everything looks good. Let's do the descent checklist, please. Okay, descent checklist, pre-suggestion. Easy 68 X-ray, Bravo. Flight direct to Lapley, descend 4,000 feet on the QNH1018. All right, direct to Lapley, descend 4,000 feet on 1018, uh, Easy 68 X-ray, Bravo. Lapli, 4,000 feet. Level change. We are cleared at altitude, so 1018. And we are all good to go in level change. Descending now, a little bit of speed break we have. Let's go down. Okay, we are going to Lapli, and we have to do descent checklist and approach checklist. Let's do that. So descent checklist, pressurization landing altitude is set, was from the ground over there already. Recall, checked, auto break is two, landing data, VRF uh, flaps 40 is one, three, four, and the minimum is five, seven, one. Approach briefing completed, descent checklist complete. All right, let's have a quick look again. What we do, proc page, 30 miles times three, Three, six, nine, nine thousand, ten thousand, nine hundred. We are still a bit high, so let's use our speed brake and go down. Good indication is as well here your vertical deviation. So at this stage, you can mitigate. It's still far away. We have thirty miles. No need to panic. Just use your speed brake if required and the speed at two five zero, ten thousand feet. Seat belts, lights, and if we have an ILS, we will tune the ILS to make sure we are ready for the approach. It's a bit windy today and a bit cloudy. Let's have a quick look at the ATIS. We forgot to look at the ATIS because it's a short flight. So we take usually the, the briefing from the uh, on ground already. But it's a good idea to listen to the ATIS if you have time. Yeah, I was too busy talking, so I didn't. This is Jersey Information India. Runway in use 08 RNP approach. Surface wind 050, 18 knots. Visibility 2800 meters. Light rain. Cloud broker 1,500 feet, temperature 20, dew point 14, QNH 1018, 
transition level flight level 60. Acknowledge received information India. India, perfect. All right. Now you can see that we are getting within the limit for our VNAV. Once we are less than 400 feet, we will have the deviation going up and then we could use VNAV path again. So you see we mitigated with the direct from the ATC. Now it's no problem anymore. You see that we are getting within the 400 feet. So Easy I will be able to use... Bravo. Descend to 2,000 feet. Clear the approach. RMP 08. Order descend 2,000 feet. Clear RMP 08. Easy 68 X-ray Bravo. 2,000 feet and we are clear for the approach. Perfect. So let's see how VNAV managed this. We are within 400 feet. So now you can see that my diamond is going up. Once I am right there, I will use VNAV again and we expect, we must see VNAV path. So let's see that happening. The cell point right there is when she wants to reduce for the approach speed. So let's go VNAV now. We have VNAV path, 240 knots, and we have the cell point. So now the aircraft is slowing down for the approach. But we are in VNAV path. As long as you see VNAV path, you are fine. No need to worry about anything. The speed is controlled by your FMC. And now we are doing the perfect approach. We will not be too high, we will not be too low, as long as we fly in VNAV path. So that scenario, the trap was mm -hmm. to descend with the direct two using what you have. So the speed brake that I forgot to retract now, we don't need it anymore. So using your speed brake and increasing a little bit the speed, as you can see, we were able to recover the descent rate and to go back into our planning. So now we are nicely on track. We can see that the lateral deviation is good. Vertical deviation is good. This cell point here, this is when she wants to reduce to set some flaps. So we will do that as well. And you will see that she will intercept perfectly well the uh, VNAV approach. So here I will go on my approach page. We will follow with the route. And one thing you have to, uh, on the 737, don't forget to lower the altitude once you reach your final approach fix here. If you maintain 2,000 feet as before, you will have VNAV alt and then we lose the approach. So here I will use flaps one. So when I go flaps one, automatically the bug goes to one. We wait for flaps one green light. And easy 68 X-ray Bravo. Contact the tower now, 119 decimal 455. Good day. 119 455, easy 68 X-ray Bravo. Good day. 119 455. This is something I could have pre-selected as well. See, it's not easy to fly alone a complex aircraft like that. But it's good to learn, it's good to practice. So let's go flaps five. Easy 68 X ray Bravo, hello. We are uh, turning final runway 08. Easy 68 X ray Bravo, continue approach. Departing traffic on the roll. Continue approach, easy 68 X ray Bravo. Final track is 083. 083. 083. All right, this is our final approach fix. So, two miles before this final approach fix, what you can do is a circle or just remember two miles. This is where you should go gear down, flaps 15. And at the same time, you set your minimum approach altitude, your MDA, which is 600 in our case today. So two miles is what we used to do and what we do in the FCOM. So now three miles, if you want to be conservative, just go ahead and do it now. So set your minimum to make sure the aircraft doesn't level off, 600 feet. Gear down, flaps 15. When we do that, we do the steps. So we set the lights, except the uh, taxi light, which is coming with the uh, landing clearance. And we arm the speed brake. 2500, radio altimeter is alive. Now, when you are approaching your final approach fix, we should be fully stabilized and configured for landing as per the uh, 737 procedure. 
So one miles, I'm good for the, let's go flaps 25 as we are landing flaps 40. So when you go flaps 25, the advantage is that you are dropping your speed below maximum speed for flaps 40. So you're not doing any flaps over speed. Once you see that you are at flaps 25 speed, you can go flaps 40 and you will not have any issue with your uh, maximum flap speed. So flaps 40 and landing checklist, please. Landing checklist, engine start switches, continuous speed brake, armed, landing gear, down, flaps, 40 green lights, landing checklist completed. All right, we are passing our final approach fix. Now we are starting the descent on the final approach fix. We can check the step based on the distance to the runway. Easy so 68 X-ray Bravo, runway wet, wind 050 at 18 knots. Clear to land 08. Clear to land 08, uh, Easy 68 X-ray Bravo. Clear to land, perfect. So from the, you see four miles. If we check quickly on Navigraph, we can see four miles 1590. So we can see that we are perfectly well here. So we are nicely on the profile. We can check that every one mile, your first officer or pilot monitoring will do it. Once you are 300 feet below your Mr. Poch altitude, you set Mr. Poch altitude in cat case 3000 feet. Set, we check that we didn't lose the nav path. We are clear to land, runway is in sight. Now we can just concentrate on our landing. As the weather is not good, I will disconnect autopilot and auto throttle at around 500 feet AGL for manual landing. We will use full reverses and we will uh, reduce the speed to a control speed, which is 60 knots or below, before taking any right turn. Right, I can see the uh, papi right now, everything looks good. On the chart, it says two miles, we should be at 960 feet. 2 miles, 960 feet, 2 miles right there, 960, so we are exactly on profile. So let's uh, disconnect uh, auto throttle first. And I will take autopilot off at around 500 feet for the manual landing. Very nice runway, very nice place here. All right, approaching minimum, autopilot comes off. FDs. Minimums. Continue, landing. Three red, Four. checked, correcting. Two Coming low, this puppy sometimes, okay, back One to the profile. Touchdown for reverses, speed break up, reverses is normal. Manual braking, auto brake disarm, 60 knots out of reverses. Easy 68 X ray Bravo, welcome to Jersey. Turn right on Alpha, continue taxi to stand for. Roger, thank you. Right on Alpha, taxi stand for easy 68 X-ray Bravo. All right, uh, right on Alpha. And we go to stand four. Just concentrate here on vacating the runway correctly. Let me know, guys, what you think about the um, PAPI on the MSFS 2020. Sometimes, even if you fly an auto land, PAPI is not showing correctly. Not on every airport, but some airport I found it um, strange. Here, I, I, was clearly, uh, I was clearly not flying correctly at the end. I was a bit low. When we had three red, then I was uh, correcting, but it went to four red. So that uh, will be a go around most probably. Depending on the situation, it went, I went clearly back to the threshold. So uh, 
Well done, scenario is over. I hope you That's my voice telling you that it's over. Thanks again to the British voices today. And now you need to fly back to Gatwick. Be careful, runway is wet and it's a short runway. So performance are very important here. As always, stay safe and please post any comments in the forum. Thank you very much. See you next time. All right, that's a pre-recorded announcement. I'm sorry that you heard it. I was not able to cut it. So we are taxiing to stand four. We'll do the after landing. So the after landing, I will do it with you so you can see the procedures. The first thing that we will do is to make sure we have the landing, the, the taxi lights on, turn off the landing light. Then we will turn off the engine start switches. Then we will turn off the uh, position light to strobe and steady to a uh, steady. Up there, we turn off the probit. Then we go into here, we can see that the auto brake goes to off. Then we will set the transponder to altitude reporting only, and we will bring the flaps up and we will retract the speed brake. And once approaching the stand, we can start the APU. I just don't want to miss the taxiway here. Okay, retract this. There we go. And we will start the APU. By the way, guys, I'm using here uh, the UK 2000 Eco Golf Juliet Juliet Jersey scenery. It's a beautiful scenery. I used it here to uh, prepare uh, this uh, scenario. It's incredible. Nice details with the car parking position, tower, and we have all the taxi stands uh, correctly uh, designed. So if you want to have a nice experience on this uh, scenario, uh, head over to UK 2000, Echo Golf Juliet Juliet for MSFS. It's a beautiful product. Uh, I started the uh, scenario using the uh, standard MSFS um, scenario and was not the same quality for sure. All right, let's see if GS6 can bring us to stand four there. Let's have a quick look if uh, we have suitable gates, number four available soon so what we will do is we will take that one the requested position is already assigned to another aircraft yes no and we are easy jet all right what i will try to do again is to uh, get rid of the traffic nearby so maybe we can park into a position four so let's have a look at the chart we are passing right now Alpha 4, you can see the sign right there. So I will just stop as the taxi, the uh, stand is not ready. So let's stop here and have a quick look at the chart. So I bring Navigraph for you. And we are going to take the uh, parking position right there. So in uh, Jersey, taxi, and uh, we are Alpha 4. So stand four is right there, so it should be fine. Let's have a look. Um, I think it's available. If we look from there, uh, yeah, because we removed the traffic, so we can see that stand four is that one here. It's available, so we can continue the taxi to our stand. Let's continue the taxi. Stand four, so we have alpha four right there. Then uh, we should have stand one. After stand one, we have stand three, and then stand four. So I can see stand one, stand three. And stand four should be the next one to the left. Yes. This is number four. We can see it here. So let's put taxi light off. 
and we try to make a nice turn here for position four. No martial law. I told Jessica, yeah, it's there. Yeah, I can see the numbers there. All right, parking brake set. Yeah, and now we do the shutdown. So when the parking brake is set, we ask our first officer to set the APU generator on the bus. Once this is done, we can shut down the engine. When you see that the engines are shutting down, first thing to do, seat belt to off, anti-collision light to off, and then it's like the before start, we will turn off the fuel pumps, we leave one for the APU if the APU is running, we will depressurize the aircraft, and then we will make sure we give some air to the passenger, so we open the uh, isolation valve and the APU bleed. The APU bleed is going to the left side, and because we open this isolation valve, we give as well passengers, which are on the right back, some air. Once this is done, we go down here, we make sure that we turn off the transponder, and we can read the uh, shutdown checklist. Shutdown checklist, please. We've got uh, fuel pumps off, probits are off, hydraulic panel is set, flaps are up, parking brake is set until the ground staff tells us that we're on shocks. Engine starts, select cutoff, and the weather radar has been turned off. All right, we are good, we are here. Thank you guys for watching that video. I'll try to show you a little bit that scenery. It's uh, just incredible. Um, UK 2000, Jersey. Um, it's, not, it's not mandatory. It's, uh, it's a very nice thing to have when you, if you want to fly that scenery a couple of times. Um, parking is there. Um, really, it changed, the, uh, it, it changed the experience you have. All right, our 737 is right there, ready to fly back to London. I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, any question or comment I would be pleased to answer and the next time I hope we can go live so I can have your question and we can have an easy and nice session together. Okay guys as always stay safe see you next time and thank you for subscribing to the channel bye bye.